Hello and welcome to an introduction to programming using Visual Basic exercises for beginners. In this exercise we are going to create a grade point average application. We are to write a program to calculate a student's GPA. The user should enter the grade A, B, C, D or F and the number of credit hours for a course and then click on the record this course button. Then the user should repeat the process for all the students courses. After all the courses have been recorded, the user should click on the Calculate GPA button and the function procedure should be used to calculate the quality points for a course. So what I mean by the quality points for a course? So here's the rules. If the student gets an A, he or she gets 4 points, for B it's 3 points, for C 2, D 1 and for F it's 0 points. And the credit hours, the max is 4 and the minimum hours is 1. So if the user gets an A for credit hours 4, then uh, the actual grade is 4 times 4, which is 16. If the user gets B for credit hours, let's say 2, then the actual course grade would be 6, 3 times 2. And then to calculate the final grade, we will simply do a actual course grade divided by maximum possible grade and then multiplied by 4 and that will give us the final grade. And here is our form, very simple, drop down menu will be used to select the grade A, B, C, D or F and text box will be used to input credit hours, then two buttons, one to record the course and then at the end we will calculate the GPA and display it in another text box. So here I am in my Visual Studio and here is the form already prepared. As you can see I have a drop down menu and if I click on the edit items you can see that I have A, B, C, D and F and the default text is select grade. So when I run it you can see that the select grade is uh, selected and when I click the drop down I can select A, B, C, D or F. But right now the form obviously doesn't do anything. But let's change that. The first thing we're going to do is record this course. So I'm going to double click the button and go to the button click event and we can start coding. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is to create some variables. So the way I'm going to approach this, I'm going to create variable grades as string and then grade value and hours as integers. The hours will be obviously the credit hours and the grade value will be the integer equivalent of the A, B, C, D or F. Again, A equals 4 and F equals 0. And one more variable which will be of double is going to be course grade which will be the actual calculation of the grade value and the hours. So these are our variables and now we have to make sure that the user entered valid values. Now in order to make sure that the user selected something from the drop down menu we are going to use selected index value. The selected index value of negative 1 means that nothing is selected. The first selected item in our case it's gonna be A has a selected index of 0 and selected index of 1 would belong to B, a 2 would belong to C and so forth. So if the selected index is greater than negative 1 then something from the drop down menu was selected. And the next condition we have to make sure that the hours were entered. And we can keep them as string because we only have four values 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we can simply make sure that the user entered a string value of 1 and string value of 2 and 3 and 4. So this is our input validation. Now notice that we have the txt hours in parentheses and it's very important because otherwise it would not work correctly. We need two conditions. We need the selected index from the drop down menu and we need one of the values from the txt hours.txt. So if the input is invalid we can display a message box and we can simply tell the user to correct the input. Alright, so this is our message box if the input is invalid. If it's valid we can start assigning values to our variables and let's start with grades. And if grades are selected from the drop down so we will simply equal the grades to the selected text from the drop down. And once we select the grades we can calculate the actual grade corresponding integer to the letter grade. So A equals 4, B equals 3 and so forth. 
And for that, we're going to create a function. So I'm going to create a function called calculate grade. And as an argument, it will take the grades as string. So we will supply the letter A, B, C, D, or F, and we will assign a numeric value to it. So I will create another variable called grade value. And to find the value for the grade value, we will simply use a select case and pass grades as an argument. So if the case is A, then a grade value equals 4, because A has a value of 4. If the case is B, then the grade value is 3. And if it's C, then it's 2. Grade value of 1 equals D, and grade value of 0 would be F. So this is our select case. We use case else for the F, because if it's not A, B, C, D, then it must be F, because that, those are the only options from the dropdown. And now at the end, we can return the value of the grade value. So since we are returning the grade value, I'm going to return it over here from the function, basically indicating that the function is returning an integer. So now after I return the value, I can call the function and have the value assigned to my variable. So I'll come back to my button click record click event and we will do the grade value equals and we will call the function so calculate grade and we will pass the grades which is the letter to the function as an argument so now we will have either one two three four or zero as a grade value and we can now take care of the credit hours since we already checked the input we know that the input is one two three or four we don't have to validate it anymore so we can assign the value from the text box straight to our hours variable. And because the input is in text format or a string, we need to convert it to a C integer to assign the value of integer to our hours. So now I have the grade value and hours and I can calculate the actual course grade and the final grade. So I'm going to create a, another function called calculate course grade and I'm going to be calling it right after we declare the hours and pass the variable hours and grade value to it as argument. And the function will return the final grade, which is going to be a double because it can be a decimal. So after the function, I'll do as double, indicating that it returns double. So I'm going to create few variables again within the function. The first one is going to be a course grade. It's going to be a double. And then there's going to be the maximum possible grade as an integer and then the final grade is double. This corresponds with the instructions. As you can see, we need to calculate the maximum possible grade, the actual grade, and from there we can calculate the final grade. Now the maximum possible grade can be an integer simply because we are multiplying whole numbers. We are multiplying the hours, which is one, two, three, or four, and we are multiplying the grades, which again is three, two, one, or zero. So let's calculate the possible grade so the maximum possible grade equals, and it equals the 4, which is A, or letter grade A, multiplied by the hours. So the 4 represents A. And that will be the maximum possible grade that a student can get from this class. Now we have to calculate the actual course grade that the student achieved. So we will do our course grade equals, and it equals the grade value that we are passing into this function multiplied by the hours. So if the user didn't get an A, but let's say B, then we multiply three times the hours. So the user did not achieve maximum possible grade, but that's what we are calculating in our course grade. And from here, we can calculate the final grade using the formula, as you saw in the introduction, which is the actual course grade divided by maximum possible grade and multiplied by four. So our final grade equals, and I'll just enter the formula, and now we can return the final grade from this function. All right, so now we have our final grade, and we can call the function from our button click event after we have our hours. We can go and do our course grade equals, and we'll call the function and pass the grade value and hours as argument. But remember, this is just one grade, and we need to calculate multiple grades. We need to save them and then calculate the final grade from all the grades entered. The user may enter as many numbers or as many grades 
as he or she wishes and we need to calculate all of them by uh, using floating sum. In other words, we need to keep track of how many courses the user took and we keep adding the course grade to our floating sum and then at the end when the user clicks the calculate GPA we will take the floating sum and the number of courses and calculate the GPA from those. All this was just for one course so we need the variables for the number of courses and floating sum and in order to do that we need to have access to them from outside of the button click event. So I'm going to go to a form level. So I'm going to declare two variables, one for the floating sum that will hold the sum of all course grades, that's going to be a double, and one that will hold the number of courses that we entered. Basically every time the user clicks the record button we will add one to the number of courses and that's going to be an integer. So by declaring them up here we have access to them throughout the form. They are not limited to just the button click events or the functions. Every time we call this variable from the anywhere on the form we'll have access to it. So now we can come down here and add a 1 to our number of courses every time the button click event is triggered and we can add the course grade to our floating sum every time it's calculated. So our number of courses plus equals 1 and our floating sum plus equals the course grade. So now we are accumulating the number of courses and floating sum in a variable and it stays that way. It's not cleared every time the button click is invoked. Remember, when we click the button, all this is initialized over and over again. However, since these variables are declared above in a form level, the values of them do not change. They change every time we click the button because we made them change. However, they are preserved until we use them whenever we want. Alright, so after the user enters a course, we should probably reset the form, meaning that we want to clear the text box and we want to clear the drop down menu as well. So I'm going to create a sub procedure called reset form that will do just that. And we don't need any arguments because all we are going to do is reset the text boxes and the drop down. So to reset the drop down, we will use the selected index value of negative 1. And we will assign a text select grade to our text property of the combo box or the drop down menu. And finally we will clear the text box for the hours. Alright, so this is our sub procedure. So now we can come over here and after we did the calculations we can call that sub procedure and it will clear everything on our form and we are ready to enter another course. Alright, so this is for our recording. So we keep accumulating the values. Now let's calculate the GPA. Let's say the user finished recording all the values and now clicks the calculate GPA and we will use the values from the floating sum and number of courses to calculate this GPA. So I'm going to create a variable called GPA and it's going to be a double. And the first thing we need to do, we need to make sure that the user actually entered at least one course. So we will calculate only if the number of courses is greater than zero. If the user did not enter any courses yet, we will display a message box informing the user of the situation. And if the user did enter at least one course, we can calculate the GPA and it simply equals the floating sum divided by the number of courses. And now we can display the result in our TXT GPA text box. And we can format it as a number, so we will do our GPA to string and make it a number with two decimal places. After we calculate the GPA, I want to prepare the form for the next student. We already added all the grades for one particular student and we want to keep adding for the next one. So I'm going to reset the floating sum and number of courses to zero for the next student. And we can also reset the form. So that way the form is ready completely for the next entry. Alright, that should do it. And before we go any further, I notice one more problem. Over here in our grades, I'm using the selected text. It actually should only say text. That's the A, B, C, D or F from the drop down. All right, so this is our code. Let's run it and see if it works. So first, let's just record course without adding anything. And you see that the invalid input is uh, popping up. If I enter the grade but not credit hours, I still get the invalid input. If the credit hours is invalid, let's 7 is not a valid, it should be 1, 2, 3 or 4, 
I still get invalid input. So let's enter a few courses, keep adding them, and let's calculate the GPA. And the GPA for this particular student is 2.67. And now when I click A and 4 and record it and click GPA, you can see that it's 4.0. And that's because we already calculated the GPA before and reset the floating sum and the number of courses. So this would be calculation for the next student. So things to be working correctly. I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next video.